given. If everybody, I, I will die for you, Jesus. Yeah. If everybody, everybody deserts you, oh, you. I, I'm here. I, yeah. I'm behind you. I'm willing to die for you. Yeah. And Jesus looked at Peter and said, Peter, you will deny me. Not once, not twice, but three times, Peter, mm -hmm. you're going to deny me. Mm -hmm. Now the question we ask from the command here, thou shalt deny me three times. The question we need to ask is, was Jesus commanding Peter to deny him? Hmm. I mean, the, the Bible no. said, the Bible said, you're going to deny me three times. Yeah. That's really God, is Jesus asking Peter to deny, well, well, if we, me and you right now, open the Bible, and see the Bible said, deny me three times. Should me and you go out in the street and people ask us about Jesus, say, well, we don't know him. <laughs> no, 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 obviously. So, but yeah. you can't read the same verse and come up with a conclusion. We should all go out in the street and deny Jesus. So let me ask you, uh, obviously, no. But Jesus was telling Peter about the future. In a few hours, Peter, you will deny me three times. God in the Bible, let me go back to the passage we're mm -hmm. reading here in uh, Leviticus. Leviticus. God in the Bible never commands the Jew to take slave, but he commands him to kill every one of the people of the land. And mm -hmm. obviously, that's going to take us to another topic we're not going to get into tonight, yeah. uh, which is killing in the Bible. But I, I want to give you just a quick answer here. Mm -hmm. Why God did not command uh, the Jew, Moses and Joshua and others, to take slave because the idea of taking over this land is to wipe out the people of the land because of their sin. Yes. Because of their sin. So if God will allow uh, some of the people of the land to live, that is not justice. So did God know about the people in the land who will become uh, a slave because of some deception will take place. Yes, indeed, because God knows the future. God knows about what is going to take place in the book uh, of uh, 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 Joshua, which is a few years later after Moses was gone. That's 40 years later after God is telling Moses what's going to happen. 40 years later, something's going to happen. And because of what is going to happen, God is telling Moses, you're going to take slave. And they're going to take their children to be slave and their grandchildren for slave for you and for your generation to come. So here, God is telling the future to Moses about what's going to happen in the future. And that's why we have to read the book of Joshua, chapter 9, uh, and uh, beginning from verse 3. Yeah. Listen carefully, my dear brothers and sisters, to what the Bible says. It's a very important story because that's the only place in the Bible when we read, we discover that the Jews were allowed, were allowed, to take slave, as God told Moses early in the book of Leviticus. Here we go, chapter 9, verse 3, to as the rest of the story go on. And when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done unto Jericho and to Ai, they did work willily, and went and made as if they had been ambassadors, and took old sacks upon their asses, and wine bottles, old and rent, and bound up, and old shoes, and clouded upon their feet, and old garments upon them, and all the bread of their provision was dry and moldy. And they went to Joshua unto the camp at Gilgal, and said unto him and to the men of Israel, We be come from a far country now, therefore make ye a league with us. People of Gibeon, the people of Gibeon heard about what is happening in the land. How the Jewish people get out of Egypt, the crossing of the Red Sea, the destruction of Pharaoh, and how God is was them, and how many victories already have, and they know. There's no chance for them to live. Then they play a drama. They made some drama. Uh, and as we read in the story, they literally uh, went to Joshua, and they act, and they said, we, we're from faraway land. We, 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 we just want to have a covenant with you. We just want to make a deal with you that we will not be destroyed. Just make a peace with us. We're not going to harm you. We're yeah. from far away land. Uh, there's nothing uh, between us and you <laughs> but peace. And let's listen to verses 14 and 15. Yeah. The Bible said, And the men took up their victuals and asked not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. And Joshua made peace with them and made a league with them to let them live. And the princes of the congregation swear unto them. Big mistake. He didn't consult God. He didn't God. consult God. God right. was put aside. They make a decision of their own. His people come from faraway land. Look at their clothes. Look at their food. <laughs> it looked like, look like they come all the way from California yeah, they, to Florida. They put on old it's, clothes. It's a long trip. Yeah. But obviously, <laughs> they were not a long trip. And if yeah. Joshua mm -hmm. and the elder of the Jew at this time have can, can have some concern about the existence of God among them. She should go and ask. 
Yeah. What should we do about this? No. They swear to them. They give them an oath. Okay, we're going to have a covenant with you. We're not going to kill you since you are coming from faraway land and you're not part of our mission of clean up this land. Yeah. So what happened in the following day in Joshua 9, 22 and 23? Listen carefully yes. what the Bible said. Yes. And Joshua called for them, and he spake unto them, saying, Wherefore have you beguiled us, saying, We are very far from you, when you dwell among us? Now therefore ye are cursed, and there shall none of you be freed from any bondman, and hewers of wood and drawers of water for the house of my God. Notice the, the, the punishment is, since you have tricked us, yeah. and we have given you already an oath, yeah. we swear before our God not to harm you, you're going to be slave to yeah. us forever, right. forever. Right. And not for my personal uh, gain, yeah. but for the house of the Lord. They're going to cut wood for yeah. the house of the Lord. They're going to carry water yeah. for the house of the Lord. And that exactly is a fulfillment to what God, the knower of the future, when he spoke to Moses early in Leviticus about slavery. But the command of God in the Bible, before he went to the promised land, not to keep one person alive, not to have any slave, but mm. to wipe them out as a punishment for their sin. As it was in Noah's day in the flood, as it was in Sodom and Gomorrah in the fire, so it is in Joshua's days. They are supposed to be all killed by the sword, but mm -hmm. except obviously these people has been uh, smart and they uh, tricked uh, Joshua and his people. Yeah. They respond. Listen to the response. Yeah. Did they complain? Did they get upset? Oh, no, no we don't want to be slave for you. Listen they, they to happy. the response in yeah. verse 24, <laughs> as the Bible said. The Bible said, and they answered Joshua and said, Because it was certainly told thy bondservants how that the Lord thy God commanded his servant Moses to give you all the land and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land from before you. Therefore we were sore afraid of our lives because of you and have done this thing. We tricked you because that's the only way we can survive. Yeah. And obviously, I believe deep in my heart, nothing happened in our life because God already planned and knew it by surprise and what God told Moses in Leviticus it's exactly has been fulfilled as these people choose to become slave they give up themselves so they can live and not have anything to do with uh, with uh, uh, to be killed or be destroyed yeah. as the rest of the people of the land who yeah. lived in Moses days right um, I really have a, a, a lot of verses coming up concerning the laws which is given in Leviticus yeah and uh, then we're gonna understand the true slavery in the Bible and how Muslim in the West uh, have taken the verses out of the Bible and out of context and twisted. Okay, uh, Osama, <clears throat> it's uh, coming up right now on 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. and so we need to take a little break and go to a, a friend who is no stranger to ABN but may be new to some of our more recent viewers sure. and that's brother Bruce in the other studio. He's going to share with our viewers a little bit about the importance of the fundraiser that we've got ongoing. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's go now to the other studio and Bruce. Brother Bruce, welcome. Thanks so much for coming tonight. Thank you, Pastor Joseph, and thank you for watching tonight's presentation of Jesus or Muhammad here on ABN. Well, as many of you know, uh, ABN has been spreading the word of Christ and also teaching the, uh, the violent truth of Islam in much of the Middle East. Well, we have an opportunity right now with our fundraising campaign to start a whole new channel, an English-speaking channel, to start in Europe and eventually in the U.S. and in Australia would be our third leg. And we, we desperately need your help. We, we hope to share information that you're not going to hear in any other media outlet, whether it be MSNBC, CNN, or in many cases in Fox News. Um, you hear words expressed such as Islamic extremism. Uh, well, folks, Islam is the teaching of Islam as you've been hearing in the program today the extreme Islamists are the ones that don't follow the Quran and uh, are peaceable people they are the ones that are misled and we want to make that point known and we want to raise it loud and clear in the Bible it says in Matthew 24 verse 24 for there shall be there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders as to lead astray even the elect Folks, that's happening right today. Uh, the Bible is coming true. Um, we're here to tell you the truth about Islam, and we desperately need your help. Our goal is to start this English-speaking channel uh, the end of January 2011 or the beginning of February. And our goal is to raise $400,000. We'd love for you to get involved. What an opportunity you have to be a partner with us. 